Hello there, Joel Tamman here from Golf Monthly, and in this video, I've been lucky enough to be testing the tailor-made milled grind high toe wedge up against the kind of classic standard milled grind wedge to see what the hype is all about. We know a lot of tour players are switching into this high toe version, but what performance, if any, or versatility does it offer golfers over the standard mill grind wedge and what kind of golfers should be using it? That's what I'm gonna be trying to decipher and explain to you guys in this video. We've seen Callaway with their Matt Daddy PM grind come out with a wedge that has full face grooves. So what that's supposed to do is give you extra spin on those open face shots. We can see here the tailor-made milled grind high toe version has that. The grooves go, extend all the way to the toe and all the way up to the top. There's actually two extra grooves on this face compared to the standard milled grind wedge. This has 17, this has 19. Tailor-made say this is gonna really give you the control you need when opening the face, especially from flop shots and bunkers and things like that. The design is actually different in a lot of other ways. There's these kind of trapezoid shaped channels kind of cut out from the back of the sole here, you can see there. And what that does is it moves the weight further up in the club head and that's gonna help keep the flight down a little bit on those full shots. There's also like a channel cut midsole here. So the sole is fairly wide and got a lot of bounce, but this channel cut through here means the turf interaction should be a lot cleaner, a lot crisper on different types of shot. The other big difference between these two wedges I've got here is the finish. We know that the mill grind comes in a few different ones. This is the kind of the darker finish. This comes in an aged copper finish, Taylor made a call in this. So it kind of looks like a bit of a raw finish. Uh, we'll come on to the effects of that um, in, a, in a moment in the rest of the video, but I really like the finish of it. You'll notice when you look down at a dress, when you have it brand new, that most of the wedge is copper, but the actual face is kind of silver. So there's some contrast there between the face and the rest of the head. The differences in shape between the two are fairly drastic, but nowhere near as drastic as we saw with Callaway's PM grind wedge. You know, this obviously the high toe wedge is slightly more triangular compared to the standard wedge, which is a little bit more rounded, but actually they're not that different in shape. There's no question the high toe wedge looks a little bit more confidence inspiring as a hit. There's loads of club face there down behind the ball. So you really do feel like you're not gonna hit a bad wedge shot with this standing over the ball because whether you open the face, close the face, whatever, there's also an awful lot of face and groove area to get onto the back of the ball. So to really fully test out this wedge, I first of all collected some data on the GC Quad launch monitor indoors in dry conditions. I hit full shots, pitch shots, and open face pitch shots with both the 58 degree high toe, this comes in 58, 60, and 64, remember that, and the 58 classics. I hit those three different shots with each to get some data, and then I went around the golf course at Burley Park here in Stamford, Lincolnshire, and hit loads of different shots, flop shots, bunker shots, full shots, pitch shots, chip shots, you name it. I hit all sorts of short game shots with both of these wedges. to really decipher the differences in the kind of turf interaction, flight, distance control, all those sorts of things uh, to assess performance. So a very, very thorough test. Hopefully you'll agree with that. So let's dive into the numbers and the performance to see what we got. So I don't really need to go massively deep into the numbers because the findings were relatively interesting actually in that both on the full shot and the standard pitch shot, the levels of spin and launch and things like that were very similar. They performed very similar indeed. There really wasn't much in it, but the big differences came when I hit the open-faced pitch shots. You'll notice that the high toe wedge spun nearly 900 RPM more. Remember, this is indoor conditions, dry conditions. 900 RPM more spin with that high toe wedge and nearly a three degree lower launch. Now what that suggests to me is that the grooves on that high toe section, as the name suggests, are really taking effect on those open face shots because as the ball is riding up the face, the grooves are clearly gripping the ball a bit more and that's causing the ball to launch lower and spin a little bit more. Now the question is, did that materialize 
out on the golf course. I wouldn't say out on the course on say full shots and uh, partial pitch shots. I wouldn't say I noticed the ball flight was any lower, but what I did notice was that I was getting a little bit more spin on the, any shots where I would open the face. So bunker shots, there was perhaps a little bit more spin there. So it's difficult to tell because there is a lot of sand interacting with the ball and the face. So uh, there's not much contact there between the ball and the face. On bunker shots, you've got a lot of sand in the way, but definitely on kind of low rough shots, uh, chip shots uh, around the greens, tight lies when you're opening the face, I would say that there is a touch more spin uh, on the high toe wedge. It means you can be a little bit more committed with this wedge uh, on those open face shots. Now, I wouldn't say it's the perfect wedge. I would say that you can hit different shots with this high toe wedge in that you are able to close the face, hood it down if you want to. And I would certainly suggest you do that on tight lies because there is quite a lot of bounce on this wedge. I know there's a kind of a channel cut in the middle of the sole. Uh, it doesn't say how much bounce is on this wedge, but I would guess it's around about 11 to 12 degrees of bounce. It's just called an ATV grind because obviously the amount of bounce that you have on the wedge depends on the angle of the club face. If you're opening it up, there's going to be a lot more bounce than if you're closing the face. But I'd say if you're just putting it kind of standard square behind the ball, maybe a touch open, there's going to be about 11 or 12 degrees of bounce there, which for me, the only place for me this struggled was on really tight lies so for example this shot here I'm on the fairway over the bunker to this flag I kind of struggled to hit crisp pitch shots with this from a really tight lie especially when the grass is kind of growing into you a little bit although I did hit some good shots to this pin but uh, that was the only kind of area where I'd say this wedge struggled other, other than that they actually excelled in all different types of shot I wanted to hit with this wedge so full shots it was absolutely fine uh, actually gave me a little bit more confidence, felt a little bit more forgiving on those full shots because it is so large. The stock shaft on the mill grind high toe wedge is the KBS High Rev 2.0. It's actually 15 grams lighter and it's softer in the tip than the shaft in the standard mill grind wedge. So you'll probably find that full shots do launch and fly a touch higher just because there's a little bit more kick in the shaft down at the bottom, launches the ball a touch higher to kind of counter effect any extra spin you might get but like I mentioned the spin on full shots was pretty similar but you should get a little bit more stopping power on those full shots. I'd say chip shots from the rough were also really good there's no question it excels from the bunkers you obviously got a lot of bounce there and a lot of spin from those bunker shots so when you're opening the face the ball is riding up the face in that diagonal fashion you're getting a bit more control, you're getting the forgiveness from the bounce and you're getting the speed through the turf from that kind of cutout section on the sole. So it really is actually an excellent all-round offering. The durability of this wedge is something I would question. You'll notice uh, I've hit probably 20 shots with this wedge so far today and you'll see the silver on the face does wear off pretty quickly. We know it's an aged copper, tour players like that raw finish that wears off over time. If you're someone who likes a pristine looking wedge, one that's going to last uh, a long time and not change colour too much, you might not uh, like what this high toe wedge is going to offer in terms of cosmetics. But in terms of performance, if you're not worried too much about looks and all you're worried is about is performance, versatility and forgiveness, I really can't fault the, uh, the high toe wedge. I'd say it actually kind of improves on what Callaway did with the PM grind and that can, you know, the shape isn't as drastically different from a traditional wedge as that wedge was. Yes, it's a little bit different, but I think they've managed to strike a good balance between getting extra performance in that high toe section and versatility without looking kind of look like a, you know, a bunker specific club or just looking a little bit too radical. This kind of strikes a nice balance between the two. And I was actually really impressed with this club. Would I put it in the bag? I think absolutely. I wouldn't tend to use a lob wedge on tight lies necessarily. I'd probably open the face on my 54 degrees. So um, tend to use my 58 more on bunker shots and from the rough. And this club, no question, delivers in those situations. So it comes in at 139 pounds. I think the same price as the uh, mill grind standard offerings. Like I said, 58 degrees, 60 and 64. So three different loft options there, depending on where the gaps fit in your wedge set. And I would say it's definitely worth considering if you're in the market for a, a high lofted wedge specific club that's gonna do perhaps all the jobs that your current lob wedge does, but a little bit better, this high toe wedge is one to try in 2018.